In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do the hyper zoom transition. So stay tuned. I'm just a normal person with no video editing background who wanted to start making YouTube videos and maybe cool transitions and effects. I don't really plan on being a professional video editor, so I was looking for a free, easy to learn video editing software. Luckily, I stumbled on Shotcut, a free open source video editing program that can do many of the tricks you can do on more enterprise video editors like Adobe Premiere or DaVinci Resolve, but with a much simpler and leaner interface, thus dramatically shortening the learning curve. It just takes using your imagination. So let's learn together. This tutorial is done on Shotcut version 23.12.15. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to choose the two videos that I'm going to use to transition from and transition to. In this tutorial, I'm going to transition from this river video and transition into this waterfalls video. So I'm going to drag the river video into the timeline and then I'm also going to drag the waterfalls video also on the same track on the timeline. Now I'm going to choose the section where I'm going to cut and blend into the next video. So let's pretend like this very end here is where I want it to transition. So the next thing you need to do is position the cursor at the very end of that first clip. And then using the left arrow on your keyboard, you count 12 steps backwards. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And keep the cursor in that position. And then you're going to go to the other clip. And you're going to drag it over the previous video until it clicks into where that cursor is positioned. And that's going to create an overlap like this. And your entire transition is going to occur in this overlap area. Once you've done that, select the overlap, go to the properties tab, and you're going to choose cut. And then in the options, you're going to see position and you're going to want to put that to 50. And this is what's going to happen after you've made that choice it's going to make a hard cut exactly at the midpoint of that transition. And that's exactly what you want to happen. And we should be done with the properties tab. And so while that overlap is selected, you now want to go to filters. And we're going to preload a bunch of filters. So the first filter we want to add is called 360 equirectangular to rectilinear. So I'm just going to do a search for 360. And we're looking for equirectangular to rectilinear. The next filter we're going to load is called RGB shift. And so we're going to go in here, RGB shift. And there it is. The third filter we're going to load is a duplicate of the equi rectangular to rectilinear. So again, we're going to go to the plus, we're going to look for 360, and we're going to find equi rectangular to rectilinear. The fourth filter we're going to load is the blur Gaussian. So we're going to look for blur. And select that. And last but not least, we're going to load the size, position, and rotate filter. So I'm just going to look for size. There. So all we did was load filters into the transition box 
but we haven't really done anything. We haven't made any settings. And so if I play this, it's really not going to make any sense whatsoever. See, nothing, nothing in what we did really did anything yet. And so what we want to do is we want to go back to each individual filter and set all the settings. So now we need to go back to the equi rectangular to rectilinear, the first one. And actually what I'll do is I'll uncheck the other ones so it doesn't affect our video. So let's start with this one. We're going to have to employ keyframes in this. And so, so the first thing I'm going to do is position the cursor at the beginning of this transition. And then I'm going to go into the equal rectangular to rectilinear and go to the FOV section and type in 148. Once I've done that, I'm now going to go over here and click the keyframe icon to lock that setting. And all of a sudden, the keyframe box is going to show up here. And I'm just going to go ahead and make it a little bigger so it's a lot easier for us to see what's going on. So if you remember, this transition box is 12 frames long. And so obviously halfway would be six frames. So what I'm going to do is while I'm at the beginning of the keyframe, I'm then going to count one, two, three, four, five, six, which is the halfway point. And in that halfway point, I'm then going to go back to the FOV setting and I'm going to type 34, which locks in a brand new keyframe. I'm then going to go one frame over and then I'm going to type 179. And then last but not least, I'm going to go to the very end of the keyframe and I'm going to type 154. And now we're done with this particular filter. So if I go back to the timeline and I play it, this is what you're going to see. And I'm going to go step by step so you can see what's happening here. Again, it's giving you a little semblance of what I'm doing, but again, you're not getting the full effect yet. So now I'm going to go to RGB shift and I'm going to check that. Once again, we're going to go to the transition point. And this one's going to be easy. All you need to do is go into the horizontal and choose 50. And that's it. That's the only setting. You're not going to need any keyframes or anything for this one. Just set it to 50. And again, let's see what happens here. Again, it did something. But nothing too dramatic yet. So now I'm going to go back to the third filter and I'm going to activate that and that's also the 360 equirectangular to recta rectilinear. Um, and so for this one, again, I'm going to position the cursor all the way to the beginning. And I'm again going to go to the FOV setting and I'm going to set this to 148. Then I'm going to lock it in again, clicking the keyframe icon, I'm going to go to the very end and now I'm going to choose 138. Again, this is what it does. The next filter I'm going to activate is the blur Gaussian. And for here, again, I'm going to position my cursor at the beginning of the transition. And I'm going to select 0% at the beginning. I'm then going to click the keyframe icon. And then I'm going to count to 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And in that position, I'm then going to type in 20%, which creates another keyframe and then I'm going to go to the very end 
and I'm again going to click zero. So this is what happens when I've added that filter. Last but not least, I'm now going to activate the size, position, and rotate filter. I'm again going to select that transition point. And in here, what we're going to do is position the cursor at the beginning again. And I'm going to go to the zoom setting. And I'm going to set this to 165.9. And once I've done that, I'm then going to click the keyframe icon, which once again loads the keyframe module. I'm going to count to six, typing the right arrow on your keyboard. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then I'm going to go back to the zoom setting and I'm going to click zero. And then I can now go back to the timeline. So I think once you've set all those settings, I think you're there. So let's see what happens. I'm going to go by, I'm going to, I'm going to do it frame by frame. So again, we're going to zoom. So let's see if I could do it faster. Let me start a little earlier here. And that's basically the effect. It's really a, a zoom distort transition. I happen to call it hyper zoom. So why don't I render this so you see the end result? So after you've loaded all your filters and set all the settings, instead of having to remember these settings all the time, what you can do is you can actually go into the filter module and select this icon right here called save a filter set. And you can select that. And I'm going to call this one hyper zoom. So what happens is it saves not only all the filters, but locks in all the settings. So I'll show you what it does. So if I went back into this transition and I deleted all of the filters, what I can do while that is selected is I can click the plus icon. And then instead of going into the filters here, I can go to this set section and I can type in hyper hyper zoom and as you can see it reloaded all the settings all the filters along with all the all the presets that I just put in there and so now you know how to do this transition but I also saved this as a filter set that I can share um, you can actually download filter sets that other creators have created and upload it into your shortcut so that you don't have to remember how to do all of these things. Um, and so I've showed you how to do it. Um, and I actually have a copy of all of my filter sets. And so I can share these filter sets, but at this point, only members of my channel have access to these filter sets. So if you want a copy of all my filter sets, I'll give you access to it if you are a member of my channel. So with all that being said, I hope this tutorial was helpful for you and I'll see you next time. I just wanted to remind you that if you haven't yet, go visit my channel. I'm sure you'll find tons of shortcut related videos. And don't forget to subscribe so that you know when I drop a new shortcut related tutorial. 
every video on my channel was done on Shotcut. So aside from examples of what Shotcut can do, you can also visit my playlist of tips and tutorials, all geared toward the beginner. Visit my Shotcut Tips and Tricks playlist and learn all the tips and tricks I've learned during my journey toward video editing. So once again, please subscribe and I'll see you next time.